But right now, what is DGPS? DGPS is totally satellite based for navigation system. DGPS improves the GPS position and uh, speed measurements. Uh, DGPS provides perfect location within 10 centimeters. But in case of GPS, we'll get 10 to 20 meter perfect location. Uh, why this will happen? This will happen for a reason. One thing we have to know, the GPS system is invented in USA, United States of America, and in Soviet Union. I told about Soviet Union because at that time, Russia didn't, uh, didn't divide it at the time. It was happening before World War. At that time, GPS will come in our market. It will, uh, at first, GPS used for only militant purpose or for only defense purpose, okay? After that thing, uh, they will, uh, USA and Soviet Union will uh, think about why, did they, uh, why don't use GPS system for human purpose or for civil purpose? For that thing, they are trying to use GPS for civil purpose. After that thing, all of you know about the diverse, uh, destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in, in the World War. After, uh, after the uh, incident happened uh, over there, uh, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, USA and Russia would think uh, if we put the uh, if we uh, if the civilians like uh, do like that. We have to take another steps. So they will omit a thing from G, uh, from GPS, which is used for civil purpose. That is, that thing is almanac. Okay, they will remove almanac from that thing. After that part, or after that thing, the GPS or the uh, when you were uh, in your phone, you were using G, uh, Google Map also or going anywhere. That time you also find that if you want to go a spot, that spot is 10 to 20 meters far away from the exact spot or exact location. Okay? This thing will happen for Almanac. Okay? Next thing, the components of DGPS. We have three components of DGPS. We have three components of DGPS. One is space, another is segment, last one is user. In case of space segment, we have a total satellite-based package or satellite-based system. That system is known as NAPSTAR, navigation, satellite, time, and ranging, okay? In NAPSTAR system, we have totally 32 satellites. Okay, and uh, GP, uh, DGPS will automatically connect 32 satellites at a time and it will give 24 into 7 access and it is of 20,200 kilometer wide range. Okay, after that, uh, be, uh, after that uh, space segment, we have the seg uh, space, after the space, we have the seg uh, segment part. In segment part, we have one monitoring station and we have uh, how many satellites, sir? There are 32 number satellite, DGPS will connect uh, 32 number of satellites at a time. Okay. Uh, right now, DGPS will connect 32 number of satellites at a time. And in the uh, segment part, we have one master station and three monitoring stations. And in case of user segment or user part, the user segment are uh, who are using the DGPS. That is us or any other company who is having the DGPS part with them or DGPS instrument with them. Okay. Like next thing we are doing with DGPS. Uh, at first we are uh, telling about something that Everyone has a conception that if we have total number of four satellites, 
our dgps will start working no guys it will not happen if we have six numbers of satellite then dgps will start working why this is because of dgps uh, case of dgps we are having a uh, dop that is dilution of precision if dop value is 6 then the uh, if six number of satellites will come then dop value will be 6 and then dgps will start working okay and uh, in case with satellite uh, the relation of with dop is reciprocal if number of satellites will increase dop value will decrease and if dop value will decrease and if the dop value will be less than of 3 will have a good condition for doing dgps survey work okay and if dop value will increase then the number of satellites will be decrease we are having three part we are having three parts with working with dgps one is uh, uh, rtk mode one is ppk mode and one is static mode at first we are coming with rtk mode that is real time kinematic rtk full form is real time kinematic so all of you know about uh, in physics all of you know about two thing at uh, static and kinematic in case of kinematic we are moving everywhere and in case of static we are fixing a thing anywhere in case of real time kinematic mode in real time kinematic mode we are doing survey Uh, we are doing topo survey with dgps okay and in case of real time kinematic mode we need a radio okay the uh, we are uh, you can say sir we have a radio on our phone but that radio will not uh, affect this kind of survey for this kind of survey we need a radio separately and that radio cost is so, uh, so high okay next part uh, or next thing in uh, i will told i will uh, i uh, told about r10 receiver okay in case of r10 receiver this radio will automatically attached over there so we are using different kind of controller that is tsc8 and in case of r2 to r8 uh, receiver we are doing survey with tsc3 controller okay the next thing is static survey what is static survey when we are measuring a fixed point of uh, we want to know the fixed coordinate of anything we are doing this static survey we'll place uh, uh, this instrument over uh, uh, in a single point for about or about uh, 12 hours 24 hours 48 hours and 72 hours for getting the exact coordinate of that thing okay next thing is ppk that is the substitute of rtk okay ppk full form is post process kinematic in this ppk process we are doing the survey work uh, we are doing the topo survey work i have told about dog there are four types of dog like g dog p dop a dop and v dop in uh, the g dop is only used for when we are doing the rtk work and the p dop is used for when we are doing ppk work in case of g dop there are four uh, four parts like latitude longitude height and time one more thing you have to know dgps is completely depend on or dgps is completely working on the base of A range principle okay range principle what is range principle range principle is uh, time taken into the speed of light time taken means time elapsed how many uh, how much time it will take to connect with satellite it will vary it will vary from 0.05 seconds to 1 minute and uh, all of you know about the speed of light that is 3 to 10 to the power 8 meter per second okay next what are the applications of uh, dgps instrument 
we are uh, using this gps instrument for air navigation by using it a pilot can uh, a pilot can receive constant information about where the plane is in three dimension next is weather forecasting where the atmospheric information can be gained from its effect on the satellite signal next is the train control for such things as avoid collisions and routing next thing is marine ship navigation by using it ship can receive constant information about current location and parking location on port okay next uh, after doing this thing after the do, after doing dgps work when we are doing this data processing will get uh, this type of uh, autocad file also okay i'll show you the exact file uh, over here this file is our dgps file you can uh, add this file um, you can put the uh, you have we have some layers so you can turn off and on the layers we have the description over here the description means some uh, codes which you are uh, which are the universal codes over here this type of uh, this type of survey we are doing and we make a uh, make the surface and we make the contour of that thing after doing the dgps work we can completely totally put that thing on uh, google earth yes on google earth i'll show you that thing how can put that thing okay yes this file is of kml file after doing this thing we'll convert it on kml file we'll run this file you can understand and this is the total ppk work that's mean i told you post process kinematic work that is topo survey work and we can also put the art, uh, static hello this is our static file you can see that we'll put the static file over here i'll just off the ppk part this is our static points i'm taking four points over here 1 2 3 4 4 was static point we just off that thing and uh, also on the ppk also off that thing as also on the static part also okay